I was, get hey, Michigan, hey, get Michigan, Michigan needed him. Head. Boy, Michigan could have used Michigan him. Michigan right could have used him for sure today. The Lions have informed uh, Trey Flowers that he will be released on the first day of the 2022 league year next week. Flowers, according to Burkett, but nothing but classes is his tweet here in Detroit. A good player, hit hard by injuries in the past two seasons. Uh, this seems like it was uh, expected, Braylon, but uh, nonetheless, um, Lions need some help there on the edge. Yeah, it definitely seemed like it was expected, although, you know, you, you wanted it to work. Trey Flowers was really good with the New England Patriots. You thought that the Quintrisha move of bringing him in was going to actually be a good one. It just doesn't happen. And you know what? That happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. man. Injuries are a real thing. You know, sometimes fans, they tend to get mad at injuries. Look, we can't help injuries. They happen. They come. But like you said, he was all class in the organization while he was here. So that's good. Now that you've moved or removed Trey, more money that you have. You know, you, your money goes up a little bit on that cap. So that's good. To, that's good to know. But now you still need a guy on that edge. You need an edge rusher. You need a guy on the defensive line. You need guys. What's the move? What are we talking about? What are we doing? What is Brad Holmes when that mastermind that he's working gets rid of Trey Flowers? What is he thinking? Yeah, and I, I, I think this would have been, look, Trey Flowers is a good player, right? right. I mean, he, he's a really good player. And, and as Dave pointed out, injuries have hit him. But. I would feel a lot better about this if I knew that the Jags were going to take an offensive tackle there yeah. and Hutchinson would have been available, and I'm just not sure that's the case. Now, that doesn't mean you you sit there and you, you keep paying a player that you don't believe fits in your plans, but somebody's got to play there, and we'll see what the plan is for the Lions at the defensive end position. Maybe the Jags want us to think that they're going to take Hutchinson and want us to trade up to number one like we are telling people we're going to take Malik Willis yeah. at number two. And how about you quarterback starved teams come up and get us? So Hutchinson might be there, guys. That, he that, just might be yeah, there. Yeah, no, I mean, we, yeah. we, we don't know, but yeah. it, it looks like Hutchinson. Just because people are saying it looks that way? Well, yeah, it, well. That, that's what this whole thing is about, right? I mean, it's all about the it's chatter. A poker game. Who was the first pick in the draft? God. Which draft? Um, oh, is the Reggie Bush draft. Everybody, Mario Williams. Yes, Mario Williams. Everybody thought yeah. that, that uh, Houston was going to take Reggie Bush in that in that 05, what was it, the 06, uh, 06 they draft. They signed Mario before the draft. And you're like, yeah. what? They signed him that night, yeah. yeah. So, really that, yeah. I mean, we really don't know. Unless there's that top-tier quarterback at the top of the draft, which there isn't this time, you really have no idea what a team is going to do with that pick. It's so funny. You said something yesterday, and I have a story. I remember I had, you know, once Nintendo, I retired my Nintendo, and I moved up to a Super Nintendo and I'm just playing Super Nintendo. And my cousin came over. I hadn't seen him in a long time. I don't know why it had been so long, but I hadn't seen him in a while. And all I played was Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo is all I thought about. My cousin came over, saw my old Nintendo in the closet. He said, oh, man, that looked amazing. He hooked that up on another TV in my house, and he played that. I beat my cousin up, moved him, and then I went and played the Nintendo, the whole thing. You all, you want what you want until it's no longer there. We didn't want Aiden Hutchinson in terms of exactly. We know right. that was the pick. This is the pick. We're going to get him. Until somebody else wanted him, right. wanted it. Yeah. Then it was like, no, 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 we want him. Yeah. I was like, no, 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 I want my Nintendo back. He's only got one, he's only got one move. His arms are short. He can't well, do this. He right. can't do that. Kind of feels like your boy uh, Kenny Pickett there. Uh, yeah. It's got the small uh, hands. Small hands. Yeah. So did Michael Vick. <laughs> got a good grade. Right. Um, guys, speaking of... Uh, other people's uh, trash is other people's uh, tra one man's trash is one man's treasure. Yep. Um, Pro Football Focus and, uh, and ESPN actually did this, right, Maz? ESPN. It's Pro Football Focus on ESPN Plus. There you go. Okay. They work hand in hand. Thank you. They put out the most overrated and underrated free agents on the market today. Yep. And one of the overrated guys is a guy that I like, and one of the underrated guys is a guy that you yep. like. I love Mitchell Trubisky. They say that he's one of the most overrated quarterbacks in this draft, in this free agent period, and Marcus Mariota is the most underrated. Can I just read for you what they of say course. about Please Trubisky? Do. Trubisky ranked third to last in passing grade across his four seasons starting for the Chicago Bears. Uh, no downfield passing, poor decision-making, and accurate throws plagued Chicago's offense with the 2017 number two overall pick. It's been rumored that many quarterback needy teams are interested in Trubisky's services anyway, blaming some of the struggles on Matt Nagy. There's enough data to show that the woes are a Trubisky problem. Let's just stick with him for a minute before we get to Mariota. He's great against the Lions, though. And, and, I, and I, yeah, mentioned, I, I mentioned this as it relates to Mitchell Trubisky a, a couple of weeks back. 
where you play and who you play for has every bit the impact, in my opinion, tell me if I'm wrong, as your talent level. Yeah. For instance, Ryan Tannehill playing for Adam Gase in Miami, a total disaster. Didn't even resemble a starting quarterback in the NFL. Put him in a good situation in Tennessee with a good head coach and a good running back and a couple of good wide receivers and and a pretty good defense, and he's a, uh, a pro bowler. Why can't Mitchell Trubisky be like that? Matt Nagy is a disaster of a head coach. Uh, right. we, we saw that he didn't know what to do with Justin Fields, too. Uh, so he's r- ruined every quarterback he's been around. Since in the, been that, coach, that, yeah. might, that might be a little, little harsh. I get but it. as a head coach, yeah. anyway, as a head coach, he's uh, not been a successful offensive coach. No, he hasn't. And once you know, in terms of before he took the head coaching job, he was called something of a quarterback guy. Like he knows yeah, how the to guru, get, the, the whisperer. I, I say whisperer. I, I, I tend to relax on the guru word, but yes, that's what he was known as. And when you take that head coaching job, a lot of times you don't have time to sit there with a quarterback. You don't have time to develop him. You don't have time to go through all his reads with him in the off season. So could be something there. But you know, I. I I tend to stem from he didn't win in college. And that was one of the big things. I wasn't high on Mitchell Trubisky when he came out. He didn't win in North Carolina. Like, you have to win Mm. in order to win in the NFL. You can't just learn how to win once you get to the NFL. So I didn't think he won enough in college for me. But, you know, that second chance. He's now been under Brian Dayball for two years with Buffalo. He's now seen behind, set behind Josh Allen. I think he could be a really good quarterback. The, the situation I think he needs to go to, don't go to one where he's, he's walking in day mm-hmm. one like the guy. Like, obviously, when you just trade for Carson Wentz going to the Washington Commanders, Carson Wentz is now the starting quarterback for the Washington Commanders. Yeah. Tyler Heineke is second. I think Mitchell Trubisky, and that's why you're hearing this stuff about him going to New York and, you know, Daniel Jones, he has to go somewhere where he can battle, where he can compete, where he has to earn the job. And I think that would be a good situation. This could be a situation here, but it's all about the money. That's why I like Marcus Mariota. I think he was a winner in college. I think he fell into some similar situation. He's the guy, actually, that Ryan Tannehill replaced. Ryan Tannehill replaced Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota. There's an argument to be made that Mariota is the most alluring free agent quarterback on the market. That says a lot about the options there. But if uh, there has to be a choice, it's got to be Mariota. He has played meaningful NFL action in just one game over the last two years. That was a Week 15 game of the 2020 season. The results were good, had a high grade. Prior season showed he should not be counted on to produce at that level, though, on a weekly basis. His career best passing grade with the Titans, 72.1. It occurred in 2017, and the uh, Titans offense ranked 17th in the NFL. Mariota is the definition of a mid-tier option that could be seen as a bridge for a team with a rookie quarterback. His next team needs to employ a play-action heavy offense that uses his skill in a, de- in a design run game. You've been liking Mariota, and, and Mariota is a guy that, I mean, why couldn't he come here and compete with a uh, Jared Goff? But I think Mariota, as a free agent, is going to want to go to a spot, and there will be plenty of options where he could be the clear-cut favorite to be the starter. Yeah, I just think you like Mariota because of the number hit. I don't think he will cost, a lot, cost you a lot. I think you bring him in. I think he has that athletic ability. He's still young. You know, he's the same age as Mitchell Trubisky. They're both 28. They're sitting there at 28 years old. Like you said, he's when he's gotten in there uh, since he's been with the Raiders or since he was, was with the Raiders, he showed and proved. He showed differences from when he was in Tennessee. He showed a little bit more resolve in the past decision-making. Mm. He showed him being in the pocket, sitting there, not trying to take off and run. But I think he still has that athletic ability. I think he has hella competition or that competitive spirit in him. I mean, let's not, let's not forget he's a Heisman Trophy winner. Has that competitive spirit in him. He was a winner in college at Oregon. You know, he's looking for that next chance. I mean, it might be it is Detroit. Maybe he doesn't want to go somewhere where all the chips or everything is on him and he has a little nervousness. Maybe he wants to go somewhere like Detroit, this building from the ground up, and he can beat out Jared Goff. That's what I think he'd be thinking. You've reached the end of the video. You know what you should do? Press like. You know you like the content that we have here at Wilbur Sports Network. I'm Braylon Networks from the bottom line. Subscribe to us right now.